Let's talk about the foods to counter obesogens. So what is an obesogen? Well, it is those things in the environment that don't have to do with calories. They have to do with man-made chemicals that contribute to being obese. And I'm talking about things that are food containers that you maybe will put in the microwave, baby bottles, toys, plastics, and their related chemicals, cookware, as in nonstick Teflon, and even cosmetics. Now, what do all these have in common? Well, they give off chemicals that mimic estrogen. And estrogen is one of those hormones that make you fat. So let's go through some of the chemicals. You have bisphenol A, BPA, which is one of those chemicals found in different plastics. Then you have phthalates, which are also in plastics and other containers. And atrazine, which is the most widely used herbicide. So it's in our food, unless you do organic. Then you have other chemicals like PFOA, which you're normally going to see in those nonstick pans like Teflon. Then you have DES, diethylstabesterol. Now that's a drug that has been banned, but apparently it's still in our environment to a certain degree. Then you have SSRIs, which are serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, better known as antidepressants. And this is why one of the side effects is waking. So let's get to the solutions. One of the things that you need to do is just be aware of what chemicals do what, thus this video. And number two, there are certain foods that you can start to eat that will slowly detoxify estrogen from your body using the hub of detoxification, which is the liver. And so your liver has the ability to turn these poisons into harmless particles. It's called phase one, phase two detoxification. And to stimulate more of this detoxification process, the cruciferous vegetables are the best solution. Now, the second solution is probiotics because the more diversified microbes you have in your gut, the better you're going to be able to deal with these poisons. Now, if we combine probiotics with cruciferous, we get sauerkraut and we also get fermented vegetables, which are really good because they provide the prebiotics, the fiber, as well as the probiotics. So just make sure you have some of these foods in your diet on a regular basis. So you can not just protect yourself from getting fat, but to avoid these chemicals that create a lot of other issues. So if you're enjoying my content, which I hope you are, and you're applying this knowledge to your health, and you have a success, I would really appreciate you sharing your success story. So click the link down below to my website where you can upload your success story so you can help inspire others.